This video is for presenting some of my observations and thoughts about harvesting antenna energy in another project I started with it too. Right now you can see I got some LEDs being powered by it. There's 24 LEDs from a flashlight. It looks like they're pretty bright. The source of the energy signal that I'm picking up is from radio broadcasts. It's not from utility lines. There are some high voltage lines to the north of me and they have active electric fields between their lines and the ground. I experienced some strange things when walking underneath them before. A couple of times when I had taken a walk, I passed underneath them and it was foggy and a lot of moisture in the air and the ground was damp. In a couple of spots on the ground, I could actually hear the ground sizzling and crackling. And I think this is from the losses of these power lines. I was told by the power company that these lines carried about 69,000 volts and they were powering the substation. I have seen some videos where guys were lighting fluorescent tubes underneath high voltage power lines. They would stick the tube up in the air and ground out the other end and they can get it to light up. I haven't done anything like that. But underneath these power lines, just to check things out, I took my meter out there and I'd stick one probe up in the air and stuck one probe in the ground and I get a voltage reading. I think it maybe was almost maybe 60 volts. And of course it was 60 cycle power, you know, it's utility lines. But the frequencies that I'm receiving from my antenna power, that's in the AM band. I did a couple other videos to demonstrate the frequencies that are being picked up. There are a couple of AM broadcast towers from me, about four miles as a crow flies. And I'm pretty sure this is the source of what I'm getting. I can tell when they boost their power in the morning, and I can tell when they cut it back again in the evening. And the power reception here will correspond exactly to that. But there are other factors that affect reception too. One of the biggest factors I feel is the humidity in the air that affects the power. When the humidity in the air is high, the power reception is lower. And when the humidity is lower in the air, the power reception is higher. And the wind affects that too. When the wind comes in from the south, it brings in more humidity and that'll drop the power. And when the wind is from the west and the north, the humidity will drop and that'll increase it again. The temperature also seems to affect it. When it's cold in the winter time, especially when it's like below zero, the air gets desert dry and that will increase the power reception. I think the reason for the higher power reception in the dry times is because of the stronger static electric fields in the air then. Moisture seems to dampen them out. And I think the radio waves vibrate these static electric fields around my antenna wires and that's what causes an AC current to want to flow between antenna wires on the ground. That's the way I would describe it and the way it seems to me. I did a video to detect electric fields in the air and I'll put a link in the description for that if you want to take a look at that. Another thing that I notice is that there is a power increase right at daybreak that lasts for maybe 10 to 15 minutes. It's right when the sun breaks the horizon and it's on a clear day, the power will kick up a little bit. Now the most power that I ever received was in a situation where it was a clear below zero night winter and the northern lights were extremely bright and active. I had the antenna receiving circuit staged for high voltage and I was charging a capacitor and the voltage got so high that it fried all the components and they were rated at 370 volts. So something was going on there that was a little different. I don't know exactly why daybreak and the northern lights would affect the power levels. Maybe it's because there's an increase of ions in the air at that time. I don't know. My antenna wires are insulated and I'm not trying to pick up electrons from the static electric field in the air you know, like a lightning rod. That's a little dangerous and I would never run something like that into my house. It would probably burn the place down. You know, I'm just collecting energy from the radio waves. I do destroy parts here experimenting with this stuff. And one part I just destroyed was part of my LED lighting. 
What got destroyed was this string of four LEDs. I had the antenna power hooked up to a pulse motor running that, and I had the, all the LEDs were off. And then when I disconnected the pulse motor I was running, I didn't, you know, I didn't shut off the antenna power, and I didn't turn the LEDs on. So the voltage built up for a period of time, and I wasn't aware of that. I wasn't paying attention. And then when I flipped the switch for those LEDs to come back on, they immediately blew all them out. I don't know what the voltage got up to. This capacitor is rated at 25 volts. It's 3300 microfarads. I did see that capacitor go up to 30 volts before. I never fried that one yet. But that's the way it goes when you're experimenting. What I'm experimenting with now is a pulse generator circuit. Have it up on the shelf right there. When the antenna energy receiver is powering this pulse motor, now with this new pulse generating circuit connected, the operating voltage of the antenna array has increased. It increased by 24%. The motor draws less power, so the capacitor can build up to a higher voltage. And at the same time, the circuit is providing a higher peak voltage pulse to the pulse motor, the drive coil. And that in turn increases the RPMs of the pulse motor. It increases it by 12%. And with the higher peak voltage pulses, going to the drive coil, I now need three LEDs to absorb that back spike because they increase that much. Just one LED immediately blows out. This is the wiring diagram for the way I have it wired up right now. What I changed out was the switching here. I changed it over to the positive side and I found that they made a three-way read switch, a single pull double throw. I just put it, put it right in here to make it, this whole circuit work the way I wanted it to. And here we have the three LEDs connected across the coil in the series to pick up that back spike. This is a three-way read switch. It's hard to see in there, but it'll switch from pole to pole on there. And of course, I broke some of these too, trying to get them soldered in. voltage from the antenna power right now under load is 2.634 volts. That's powering those LEDs. So I'll shut them off. And then the voltage <coughs> will build up in the let's see what we got here. And the voltage is building up quickly now in the circuit antenna circuit. And I'll switch the motor around to give a little push. And you can see those back LEDs flashing. Looks like the motor settled in around 5.6 volts. With the pulse generator hitting the drive coil with about 9, 8, 9 volts in there. The pulse generating circuit is still under development. So I'm not going to disclose too much about it. This is the 
first step in the circuit and the one that's operating now is the second it's about a 15 percent improvement over the first one I thought it would be more but I'm still not quite right on the connections it's a very complicated arrangement and it needs more work yet so it gets some interesting results and I'm hoping to improve it quite a bit more so I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned I will make an update as I get some more circuitry put together thanks for watching